对，好，好，各位专家，各位代表，大家下午好。呃，我是中国混凝土与水泥制品协会的李志玲，特别荣幸来主持我们本次大会“致敬巴赫”主题活动。呃，丹麦阿尔伯波特兰。的巴赫先生是超高性能混凝土的发明人和工程应用奠基者，在发给大家的资料《呃新混凝土新技术》中和后面赵军秘书长的报告中，丹麦阿尔伯波特兰的呃巴赫先生是超高性能混凝土的发明人和工程应用奠基者。在发给大家的技术资料《新混凝土新技术》中和后面赵军秘书长的报告中，会让大家再进一步的了解它。嗯、呃，今天我们举办致敬巴赫的主题活动呢，也起源于清华大学陆新营教授的建议。呃，陆老师很早就学习到巴赫先生的文章，他高度赞扬巴赫先生的理论研究和应用成果。嗯、呃，但觉得呢，咱们学界和工业界对巴赫先生所做的开创性工作了解的啊、呃、还相对有限。啊、呃，我们呢应该吃水不挖井人，并且巴赫先生的理念还有他的理论，呃，时至今日仍未过时，对我们开拓视野、探索未来发展仍具有很好的指导作用和参考价值。呃，为此呢，我们这次大会特别策划组织了致敬巴赫的主题活动，在阿尔伯波特兰安庆有限公司的支持和协助下，我们也征得了萨门特集团可持续和研发中心。嗯、呃，就是巴赫先生以前的工作单位的许可，啊、呃，清华大学的陆新营教授，还有咱们 u h p c 分会的赵军秘书长，花费了大量的时间和精力，呃，将巴赫先生就是珍贵的技术资料，呃，翻精心翻译成我们本次会的技术资料，就新混凝土新技术，啊、呃，然后发给大家。呃，我们也特别邀请了巴赫先生的呃四位友人，以视频的方式来参与了这次活动。呃，录制了纪念巴赫先生的视频。嗯、呃，第一位是巴赫先生的学生，呃，丹麦海康公司的研发经理 b e n t a r o b 先生。啊、呃，第二位是 t r a n s a n o m 女士，是巴赫先生曾经工作单位的现任负责人。呃，第三位是荷兰的 Peter Bro， 不是，嗯 ，Peter b i t t l e r 先生，他从八十年代就开始与巴赫先生合作。啊、呃，在荷兰和世界很多地方都做了 UHPC 的一些应用工作。第四位是瑞士洛桑联邦理工大学的呃 Yogan b r o v e l a 教授，他在读博士期间呢就开始跟巴赫先生交流探讨 UHPC 的结构，啊，那接下来请大家观看视频。好，大家观看视频。Hello, my name is Ben Orb. I'm R&D manager at Hikan.、Uh, Hikan produces only UHPC and started in 2001.、Uh, the type of UHPC that we use is called、uh, CSC or Compact Reinforced Composite, and was developed in 1986 by Hans Henrik Bagen. I've been asked to talk a little bit about、uh, Hans Henrik, and I won't talk much about his professional accomplishments. I'm sure others will do that, but I'll mostly re relate my personal experience with、uh, Hans Henrik Bagge. I first met Bagge in 1986 when I visited Alba Portland. I was looking at、uh, a subject for doing my thesis for structural engineering. Um, and Bagge talked about development of UHPC with such enthusiasm that it was very easy for me to make the decision to to look at this in my project.、Uh, me and、uh, my fellow student class did a project on CSE, the UHPC that、uh, Bagge had developed the year before.、Uh, Bagge was our advisor. And during the project, he came up with so many interesting ideas and、uh, problems that we were not able to cover all of them in our project. So after the thesis、uh, was finished, I decided to go work with、uh, with Bagge at Alba Portland to continue working with this、uh, new and interesting material.、Uh, when I started at Alba Portland, Bagge was in his、uh, late fifties, so he seemed very old to me at that time. Uh, but、uh, in his mind, he was very young. He always stressed that、uh, things should be fun and interesting for us to work with.、Uh, 
uh, most mornings she would come in with a cup of coffee and sit down in my office to have a chat and uh, we talk about many things and often it, it would turn to sport even at that age Parker was very good at badminton and tennis and when he was younger he had been among the best in Denmark and he participated in Wimbledon as a junior tennis player. Bago would also uh, give me small problems and small challenges to solve. For instance, he'd, uh, one could be to look at uh, the best and most effective way of ripping off a Band-Aid uh, from a, a fracture mechanical uh, approach. And uh, Bago's mind was always active. He was always very curious about things. So uh, before he did any projects in the lab, he would uh, sit in his office and read and think and develop the theoretical background for this. Also, he uh, would uh, go to extremes. He liked to challenge the boundaries of things. For instance, in, in one test series, we were looking at uh, uh, packing theory compared to uh, the, the chemical action in, in concrete. So we were replacing cement with fly ash. And even at uh, six kilos uh, per cubic meter of cement, we still got a reasonably good concrete with about 35 megapascal of uh, compressive strength. Uh, however, in one case, uh, it turned out that the concrete we produced didn't harden. And later we found out that the lab technician had forgotten to put in any cement at all. So, so that's, that's not a good idea. Also, one thing that should have occurred to us that is that we were working for a cement factory. So replacing cement with fly ash was perhaps not the best thing to do. Also later management explained to us that the price of the clinker itself was not very much higher than the fly ash, but it was still a fun project to do. Uh, one thing that worked against Baga a little bit was that uh, he always wanted the best technical solution in every case. He was not so good for compromise and the money side of things really didn't interest him that much. He had the idea that if you made a good product, then things would take care of themselves, also commercially. And uh, to a certain extent, uh, that uh, was the case for his DSP materials and his CSE materials, that uh, they became quite successful also commercially. Uh, after he retired in 1996, uh, Barger still liked to keep uh, informed of uh, how things were going with his uh, different products. And as he lived only six kilometers from Haikon, he would visit now and then and we'd discuss projects and, and design ideas. For instance, uh, a cantilever balcony slab for us would typically have a thickness of 80 millimeters with 2% of steel fibers. But if we increased fiber content up to about 6%, then perhaps thickness could go down to 65 or 70 millimeters. And the Baku would always prefer the high fiber content. But in our case, we were a commercial factory from the beginning. Uh, so we had to sell our products in a competitive market, meaning that we had to get the most cost-effective solution. And typically that would be the lower fiber content and, and the slightly increased thickness, especially as we were using quite expensive stainless steel fibers. Uh, but Barker enjoyed to see how his products were used around the world and he especially liked to see the jobs that ha have been created at Densit and at Icon and uh, the idea that so many people were making a living out of the products that he developed so many years ago. Uh, the last few years before his death in 2017 I didn't speak that much to Barker. Uh, but I know that uh, the first projects he worked on as he finished as an engineer in uh, 1956 were uh, building bridges around the world. And uh, a few years before uh, Barker died, we finally started making uh, bridges in CRC in Holland. And that's something that he would have appreciated very much. And finally, uh, thank you for having this session uh, in uh, Barker's memory and thank you for your attention. Hello, my name is Trine Stornum, and I'm head of the Group R&D unit in Cementia, who is a mother company of Alba Portland in China. It's an honor for me to have been invited to talk about Hans Henrik Bakke for you today. Because I'm working in the same department as Hans Henrik Bakke used to work for many years, and I have met him several times when he visited the department after his retirement. 
He was always very curious and asking questions about the ongoing R&D projects. Unfortunately, Hans Henrik Bagge died in 2017 in the age of 86 years old. In his active career back in the 1970s and 80s, he worked in Upper Portland, Denmark's research department and focused his research in a new type of cement-based material with superior mechanical properties compared to a conventional mortar or concrete. After developing the first ultra-high performance concrete with a compressive strength higher than 150 megapascal, it was soon realized by Bagge that high compressive strength was not always enough for the specific application. Therefore, Bagge developed the technology further and focused on improving other material properties like tensile strength and ductility, which later opened up a whole new world of applications like flooring subject to high wear, safety boxes, high wear material for pipes, grouts subject to dynamic loads, and slim constructions like stairs or balconies. In 1986, several years of research by a team led by Bakke at Upper Portland resulted in a patent for a material named CRC, Compact Reinforced Composite. It was the first ultra-high performance concrete which were heavily reinforced with steel. The new CRC technology combined knowledge about packaging technology, reinforcement and admixtures with water reducing properties and it resulted in a high density and ductile material with material properties more similar to steel than conventional concrete. CRC and UHPC have been used during the last decades in many concrete applications. In Chemensier we have developed the concept further and developed a binder based on the Futurism technology. The Futurism technology was invented and patented to decrease the carbon footprint of cement by replacing the clinker with calcined clay and limestone, which reacts in synergy with the cement and contributes to the strength development. There's a team in the R&D department of Cementier dedicated to innovation in white cement applications. The team has succeeded in developing a binder with patented FutureSemp technology, but based on white cement and light colored raw materials. The binder has been used as basis for innovating a range of high performance concrete products like Oldboy Excel. Contrary to the majority of USB-C products, Oldboy Excel is based on a technology which is not dependent on scarce raw materials and hence we in Cementier believe it is the future type of UHPC. Even more than 30 years after Bagger's research started, it is recognized by people in the cement and concrete business all over the world. That is because we still benefit of his research in high density cement based materials and are able to develop many applications with this superior material. That was the fairy tale of Hans Henrik Bakke, seen from the perspective of his former research department. Thank you. I met Hans Henrik Bakke for the first time in 1985 during a technical meeting with Dense DS regarding the production of wear panels for a conveyor belt of a silicon carbide producer in the Netherlands. The extreme hardness and the mechanical properties of the silicon carbide resulted in extreme wear of the different transport systems in the plant, which could be solved with dense wear cast panels and dense wear cast linings. I discussed with Hans Hendrik Bacher the use of silicon carbide aggregates in the dense wear cast panels in locations with abrasion due to transport of silicon carbide particles. During the following years, I had several meetings with Hans Hendrik Bacher regarding material optimizing possibilities and applications for the offshore industry. In 1986-1987, the period that Hans Hendrik Bach and co-workers were starting to develop compact reinforced composite, I was working on so-called fiber cocktails by using fibers of different lengths, diameters and composition. In 1988, Hans Hendrik Bach told me that when he invented his ultra-high performance concrete in 1978, others claimed that they made the actual invention. I understood and understand his frustrations because I have experienced very often the same. In our profession, people are taking too often the credits for ideas and even inventions made by others. In my keynote presentation at the preliminary session, International Symposium on Ultra High Performance Concrete, 
I presented an historical overview of development and applications of ultra high performance concrete during 25 years. Mr. Paul Ecke from Lavas, who gave his keynote presentation before me, confirmed after my presentation that it was correct, that it was Hans Hendrik Bagge who developed ultra high performance concrete. Since 2004, more engineers understood that it was Hans Hendrik Bagge who invented ultra high performance concrete in 1978 and that many applications were successfully executed with ultra-high-performance concrete in several business areas since. Hello everyone. This is a tribute to Hans Henrik Bachwe. My name is Eugene Bruweiler from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, EPFL, in Lausanne, Switzerland. I consider Hans Henrik Bachke as being the inventor and pioneer of what we call today UHPFRC, compact, cementitious, fiber reinforced composite material. When I was a doctoral student, I had the chance to meet him. He gave, in 1987, a fascinating and very inspiring lecture at EPFL. And at that time, I had the chance to discuss with him about his uh, new ideas. Out of one of his uh, landmark papers, uh, I would like to, to uh, cite some of his achievements. In 1988, he published a paper entitled The New Strong Cements, Their Use in Structures. So the structural engineering application was actually outlined here, very new ideas. And he called this material actually compact reinforced composites, not concrete, a composite material. And he used uh, a brand name, Densit or DSP, that he uh, pat patented in order to uh, designate his material. Once again, CRC was the term that he was using, compact reinforced composites, that we can um, uh, consider as being invented in 1986 by Hans-Henrik Bachre. The four basic ideas of CRC, a very dense binder material with a water powder ratio of about 0.18, only. A high concentration of fine, strong fibers, above 5% in volume. This was his objective. Number three, a high concentration of strong, stiff particles, particles smaller than one millimeter. And number four, joining uh, this, these materials together with densely arranged steel reinforcement bars with a very high concentration of uh, 10 or even up to 20 percent. So these are the four principal ideas um, to uh, develop and invent CRC as a structural material. And with this structural material, of course, the structural resistance can be increased very significantly when compared to reinforced concrete. And in addition, the formation of cracks uh, does no longer occur. That was his message. Actually, he explains all this in uh, his papers that, for example, with uh, compact reinforced composite, CRC, when we add reinforced uh, steel reinforcement bars, the risk of uh, formation of cracks is actually not existing. As compared to uh, reinforced concrete, where uh, uh, the material is undergoing a significant cracking when there are too many rebars in the cross section. Or in other words, we have to limit the amount of rebars in concrete. So, I would like to invite you to study the fundamental papers uh, 
written by Hans Henrik Bachel, in order to understand that what we usually call today UHPC with only 2% of fibers, this is actually a material, a concrete, that he didn't uh, invent. That's not based on the principle of Hans Henrik Bach, only part. However, the material UHPFRC, as we call it today, with more than 3% of fibers, with a dense matrix composed of particles, not aggregates, is actually a composite material, not the concrete. This is what uh, Hans Henrik Bachel meant. And he also meant that UHPFRC should be reinforced with steel reinforcement bars. So these are very significant contributions to uh, structural engineering as proposed and invented by Hans Henrik Bachel. Thank you for your attention. Uh, 刚才我们看大家都全身关注了观看这个视频那在第一个视频中那非常遗憾